How's it going, everybody? Maximum McGee here, and today we are checking out Daylight, Daylight, a new survival horror game. And to help me do that, I'm joined by John Harden from Atlas and Andre McGuire, creative director at Zombie Studios. Gentlemen, thank you both for sitting down with us. First off, which one of you is John and which one of you is Andre? I am John. There we go. This is John. I'm Andre. <laughs> Well, we got that straight. And this is Daylight. So it please is daylight. introduce this game for us. What are we looking at? Daylight's going to be a psychological horror game coming out for the PC and PS4 in early 2014. Um, the psychological horror genre, or the horror genre in general, is kind of underrepresented here. But one thing that we do that no one else really does right now is make it procedurally generated. Meaning you are never going to play the same thing twice. Um, the the quarters you see in us walking through right now, um, all of these are put together at random. So uh, every time you start up a new game, the uh, layout's going to be different. Everything in the quarters is going to be different. The things that jump out and scare you are going to be different. Um, so yeah, you, you're you're never going to get scared in the same way twice. Yeah, that's something I think is really interesting because obviously building horror and building a horror game is so much about crafting a very specific experience and having like having your scares queued up ahead of time and building mood and building suspense like how do you how do you leave the that to just to chance um, so much about horror is about setting up a, a standard and breaking it um, but what we're able to do with the procedural content is we're able to make it uh, new every time so with a lot of horror games you get that problem of the walkthrough gets posted up on YouTube, all your scares get spoiled. Uh, we've set up a system where we can actually keep it uh, fresh and terrifying each time. Um, so that really works in our advantage, and, and really that's one of the reasons why we think that a procedurally generated game is such a great fit for the horror genre. Um, but it is true, and so we're setting up, um, we're setting up some systems that allow that kind of anticipation build up as you're going through the uh, the corridors you know you're hearing uh, changes in the ambience or ch hearing changes in the music you're picking up items that are you know deal with subject matter that's very spooky and then you know we're able to kind of get the player to that frame of mind even if in this procedurally generated environment where it's uh you know have these big scares and that kind of a thing and it's uh it's really interesting to develop so then andre does this game sort of follow a roguelike kind of style where you're expected to play through it multiple times it's a little bit different each time yeah you, absolutely you don't carry like any sort of character progression between playthroughs well, or things we're like really that. trying to avoid the kind of the tropes where you're you know fighting monsters and exchanging blows and blowing things up it's really not a combat experience it's really about sort of uncovering the story of our main character sarah and also uncovering the story of um the island where this takes place so um yeah, I mean, we're expecting players to go through it multiple times. You'll get a different result each time as far as the things that you uh, find along the way. And uh, that's going to mean the story is going to sort of unravel in a, in a unique way each time. Yeah, it's, it's not really a horror game when players spend all their time looking for extra ammo or you know, that <laughs> weapon to keep them alive. So we've created this incredible sense of isolation in daylight where, you know, you at the same time, you, you know, you are the lone person in this hospital there's also that incredible nagging feeling that something's in here with you um but that something is uh you know we leave to the player's imagination don't come right out and throw it in people's faces yeah something you mentioned earlier that i thought was a little funny is that uh, even though we're investigating a spooky abandoned hospital right now the game is not entirely That's spooky right. abandoned <laughs> hospitals <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You uh, you kind of wake up in this this abandoned hospital initially, but uh, as things progress, um, the environments also uh, there's a lot of surprises for for uh, the environments. So the environments progress in interesting ways too, because the game is procedurally generated. It allows us to to play with a lot of different feels and looks and things. How long do you think a like a typical playthrough would last for somebody? Like, are you expecting multiple short bursts? So yeah. Um a typical playthrough is going to be a couple hours. I mean, if you're great at exploring, if you sprint through, you find all the uh, keys and everything to get into the next uh, areas, then, you know, you're only looking at a couple hours. But that one playthrough is not going to give you a good snapshot of what's going on in the story. I mean, you'll, you'll hit the certain key moments, but you're not going to figure out what's going on with the style. And there's a lot of depth there in terms of, uh, the, well, without spoiling it, the island's history. Okay. So then, 
just to cover our bases here, talk a little bit about the, uh, what I think is a compass, I'm assuming, down in the corner that she's holding. Yeah. Yeah, um, the player has a, a, a cell phone uh, that's got a light on it. Um, the compass is uh, something that we're working on as far as how the player is going to navigate this procedural space. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the challenges is that it, it, it is procedural, and that's very cool for the horror genre, and, and it's certainly exciting for us to work on. But it's also uh, uh, creates some challenges for us as far as giving the player direction and figuring out how to get through mm -hmm. uh, the different objectives. So. Yeah, we're playing with the idea of a, a, a compass here. Uh, we've got some additional ideas for the cell phone that uh, that so we're not here. quite showing yet, but um, um, this will help the player navigate these uh, randomized spaces. Yeah, I imagine it must be with any, well, I guess this is true for any roguelike, but having that sort of modular design where any piece could fit together exactly. in any sort of way and you don't yeah. know exactly how it's going to go, uh, giving the, uh, the player a compass is a... It's probably a really good tool to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it also um, you can see some of the corruptions and things that are happening on the screen there. Uh, uh, that's going to tie into uh, the the things that you find in in these environments that um, you know we're hoping are going to be really uh, really cool to learn about and also very scary. So, in addition to like the exploration elements, like what is the what's the main form of of challenge for the player if not combat really it's all about trying to get out of the location figure out how to solve the the, the maze if I'm you know if we're to sort of characterize the, the environments as a maze okay and also uh, uncover um, the story which is going to be randomly populated throughout the uh, the environments in the form of uh, pickups and notes and things that you'll find along the way um, so as you're uncovering that story you're also sort of making your way through it I think that's really interesting that you the player can figure out because I imagine the character in the game is not going to be able to piece together the story because you're going through multiple playthroughs, but you, the player, will be able to piece yes. together the story because you can live out multiple instances that's of right. her that's, life. That's right. That's a that's a great way to put it. Yeah. I, I also be remiss to point out that this is going to be one of the first Unreal Engine 4 games uh, for the PC and PS4. Um, it's it's just something that handles the whole procedural nature of daylight so well uh, and came together and made a really cool uh, environment for the game. Yeah, was uh, doing this game in sort of a procedural randomized style, was that something, an idea you guys had from the beginning? Yeah, the um, as far as doing a procedural uh, game, that's something that uh, was part of the concept from the beginning. Uh, but what was cool about working uh, with Unreal 4 is that um, we were able to jump right into that kind of a uh, that kind of tech and and have our focus be on that um, because the engine is so streamlined. Um, you know, we're not focusing a lot of attention or having to focus a lot of attention on setting up a lighting engine or figuring out how we're going to get this thing to render. It's, mm -hmm. it's really about content from the beginning. All right, guys. Well, thank you both for sitting down and talking with us and showing off Daylight. Can you remind the listeners at home when this game is coming out? Absolutely. Look for it as a downloadable title in early 2014 for the PC and PS4.